Okay. Ja, hallo, äh, liebe Kollegen und Kollegen, äh, herzlich willkommen hier. Good morning, colleagues. Before we start, I have to explain a few important rules. If you want to ask something or make a comment, you have to come to a microphone. Otherwise, the interpreters and the people attending through a live stream will not hear you. Toilets are to the right, to the left, and we'll have lunch later. Welcome to all of you. I have to take my important paper and uh, read a few things. Welcome to our symposium, the Open Youth Work in Europe, Standards for Open Youth Centers in Europe. I'm happy that you found your way to a youth center or that you can follow us through the live stream. All day we're going to discuss about preconditions required for open youth work. We've been co-founded by the Erasmus Plus EU program two years ago. We started our work and we found partner organizations with different backgrounds, different experiences, different framework conditions. Apart from our expert discussions, we thought a few things were really important. We wanted to work out a decision-making basis for people involved in open youth work concerning how to design, develop their centers, and to make things clear also for people who are not experts. We've tried for days to simplify things or to dump things down. We also studied which resources and rooms are needed. This wasn't really easy because some of the partners were working in small villages with just about 200 inhabitants and um, others in huge cities up to several million inhabitants, and we wanted to work out profiles required for youth works. And of course, we understand that not all of the skills can be learned at universities. And it's important that everyone involved in this work understands it. Somebody who would have been a real qualified experts for us couldn't be with us today. Unfortunately, Ivrisms is working at a college that has the open youth work as a qualification career. Unfortunately, his plays suffered severely from the flood. Next. The speaker is Heiko Tiller, director of the youth office in Maitzan Hellesdorf, and I'm very happy that uh, he found time to join us and talk to us. You're right, yes. Well, we have roughly the same size, so microphone level is quite okay. Thank you, Martin. I'm very happy for various reasons that I can address you. I'm especially happy to welcome 17 international guests to our district. Two years ago, it would have been quite common, but due to the corona pandemic, events, meetings like these have become really rare. So I'm really, really happy that this organization is a kind of a signal for a coming or returning normality. And um, hopefully, in the not too far future, we can have events like these more frequently and on an even more normal basis. So welcome to all of you again. Martin mentioned a few things already. We have one of Berlin's 12 city districts with about 270,000 inhabitants. 
Berlin altogether has about three and a half million inhabitants, and we are one of the medium-sized districts concerning population numbers. We have an enormous structure mix. We have a lot of quiet areas with almost rural infrastructure, single family houses, and also about 180,000 people living in large blocks of flats, high rise blocks even. And this is causing a number of issues in the social spheres. And this is one of the reasons why I was so happy to find that this youth center wanted to engage in this project on open youth work, not just in this district. I think they're very active with regard to promoting this form of youth work publicizing it worldwide, well, especially Europe. In the 90s, I've been very active in this field myself. I could enjoy funding also and support by the EU. I got to know facilities in France, Spain, Belgium, Denmark, and Getting to know them showed me that there are different approaches, different forms of using houses like these. Of course, it, all of them different again. So there are enormous differences, and I'm very happy for that reason to f have the symposium here because it makes me hope that these hope houses, this, these facilities will really become places for open youth work, that young people, children can come here, that they can develop in these centers and develop these centers on the other way, round two. And this is why we also support this project. You may have found the litter folders, Martin wanted to distribute them. I can hold up one of them. This is one. These small sheets provide an overview over all the facilities, centers for youth and children in our district. There are a total of 38. And some of them bigger, some of them smaller. We support them, fund them to extend, and you see we have quite a concentration of these facilities in those parts of the district where we mostly have these large blocks of flats with more social issues and fewer of them for various reasons in the uh, areas with more single family homes. Well, I, sorry, I forgot to welcome also the people participating on the li live stream. Welcome also to the visitors from the other districts. I'm very happy that you joined us because it shows me that our project is significant beyond the boundaries of our district. So I wish your event lots of success. I can imagine that Martin is somebody who's going to continue spreading the idea of open youth work and how to go about it, how to design centers, how to work in them. And I would be very happy to see this going on, and I would be very happy if this place here in the district was considered to be the root of this movement. Now, Martin, for how long will our international guests be with us? Only today, or how long? I have to stick to my own rules. I have to talk into the speak into the microphone. Well, the group joined us last week, Friday, and tomorrow they're going to leave. 
So I guess and they were showing a few things here in Berlin. Yes, yesterday, since you mentioned Corona, yes, we actually went to Friedrichstadt Palast, a packed house, a show in a full house. So I wish you lots of success, lots of success an enjoyable day. Unfortunately, I cannot stay with you. I do have another few few other appointments today. I would have loved to stay with you to see how things evolve here, but unfortunately, I can't. So for your trips back home tomorrow, all the best, and I hope you will get lots of good ideas here, taking them back home. Thank you very much for your attention. Next, the speaker is Chiara Maci. She is one of our employees, and she will introduce the project. But before she starts, one more explanation. Last week, we discussed everything we are going to present here, and we've tried to study the various centers for youth work in Berlin from very small places up to real palaces, including, for instance, the Hella Mädchen Club, the Hella Girls Club. Uh, our project, our um, project Open Youth Work for Open Society, and uh, in particular, because today we will go deeply in its topic, uh, the project flow of this project. Um, Open Youth Work uh, is an international project uh, started in uh, 2019, so before the corona period, uh, and uh, aims uh, to raise awareness uh, about uh, Open Youth Work uh, and uh, to support it. In, uh, this project involves five partners uh, from uh, five different countries, uh, Romania, uh, Serbia, uh, Slovenia, Italy and Germany, that work together to create a set uh, of uh, argumentation tools uh, to support uh, open youth work, what uh, open youth work is and should be uh, from different perspectives. This one uh, was one of the main goal of this is one of the main goal of the project, and I would like also to underline that uh, this project wants to support also the objective nine of the European Youth Goal, that uh, uh, is focused on the space for youngsters uh, to. Um, um, uh, develop uh, their personal capacities and competencies in uh, um, their personal development. Um, so, um, this, um, in this project, uh, uh, we were focused uh, on. We, um, I will present uh, now the the flow of the pro uh, of the project, uh, and uh, we focus uh, uh, on different perspective. Uh, the perspective of young people, of youth workers and social scientists, and we did, did it with the different uh, tools, uh, proposing uh, interviews and questionnaires to young people and to youth workers all around Europe, but also uh, doing uh, among these partnership, partnership some inter transnational meetings where we focus more on uh, some topics uh, um, that we want to underline about uh, open youth work in general. So the project started in uh, 2020 with uh, the first uh, startup meeting in Pancevo in Serbia. And uh, in this uh, startup meeting, uh, we agree and we, um, um, oh, yes. Yes, in 19, um, we collected uh, and we agree about the structure of two surveys that we propose um, to many youth centers in Europe, but also to young people, youngsters, with the help, of course, of the youth workers that work inside this space. Uh, the first uh, survey is uh, youth centers and activities in Europe. What is the profile of youth center in Europe? With, uh, what activities, which kind of activity are typical for youth center in Europe? The second survey is a vision of youth center in the perspective of youth. Of youth. Um, in 2021, so uh, starting from July, uh, because of the pandemic, we were focused more on um, um, data analysis about the results of this survey. 
in uh, 2021, in July, we went to, in, to, to Sicily first, uh, in Nicolosi, and we focus uh, uh, our work uh, more on the topic of uh, uh, youth workers' uh, profile. The first one, uh, youth, work, youth work in general, so um, which are the main features and characteristics of uh, youth work and uh, um, youth center. Uh, what is uh, our uh, also ideal youth center in the perspective of youth workers? Um, in September, we went to uh, Rakican in Slovenia, and so we focus more our work about uh, benefits uh, on supporting uh, uh, open youth work, um, benefits that can be a social benefit, economical benefit, uh, or political benefit in a, uh, a short, medium, or in a long period. But uh, during the symposium of today, we will see all the results about this uh, uh, Thema and the focus that we developed together. Uh, we arrived finally in uh, October, so we had uh, our last uh, transnational meeting in, uh, in Berlin last week to finalize uh, all our results. And, um, and also this project was uh, connected uh, with uh, five days of seminar, and so um, I will present now the, the partnership. Uh, because we started to work uh, with uh, Strout, uh, APS, Associazione di Promozione Sociale from uh, Mussomeli, Italy, Rotterbaum Berlin, Curba de Cultura uh, it's from Izvoarele, Romania, Naranjasti from Pancevo, Serbia, and RIS from Rakican, Slovenia. But during the last seminar uh, of uh, this week, uh, we introduce also the uh, competence and the professional uh, inputs that came from Zravodast, um, from Banja Luka, Bosnia Herzegovina, uh, TAC um, from Barcelona, Spain, and La Ligue uh, from Marseille, France. So it uh, was a really, um, I would say, a collective work that started two years ago. Uh, was developed in the first part with a data analysis and uh, proposing, uh, so it was uh, um, um, not a, a work in person, but during this year, after July, we could work together, and so uh, we in I can say that we increased a lot the quality of our results about the topic of uh, open youth work. Um, I will present uh, shortly uh, the results of our project that we can find also in our website. Um, that uh, it's uh, the complete and full archive about um, all the, the flow of the project and all the results. The first uh, uh, intellectual output, the first results is uh, a database um, or a collection of um, data information about youth center models, so um, variety of implementations of European ways of doing youth work, depending on national perspective, because, yes, um, I will show you. So the second one, the second data collection is uh, about youth center activities, so a collection about uh, activities that uh, youth centers in Europe offered to young people. And the third data collection is about research on youth work. Uh, so about uh, um, intellectual outputs from other projects, uh, results, uh, booklets, uh, papers, uh, and uh, books, uh, of course, uh, about the topic. Uh, about the youth center models, uh, we collected information and, uh, uh, from 22 youth centers uh, from uh, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Germany, Estonia, Italy, Romania, Serbia, Spain, and Slovenia. How we did this uh, data collection, uh, we um, um, created a survey, and so we structured together a form uh, asking for some information. For instance, uh, um, general information like the description of the youth center or simple information, date of opening, kind of organization, but also the way of funding that it's also interesting during the, um, um, the process, our um, um, project, and during the seminar, we saw uh, many, many differences about the way of funding of this uh, um, space for youngsters, uh, age of users, uh, target groups that um, the activities are addressed for young people. Um, 
Uh, the same for uh, youth center activities, uh, we created another form um, and um, many uh, youth workers, so uh, in this form there is also the designer, so many youth workers reply to our request about uh, youth center activities and they propose some of their, of, um, their um, uh, best practice that they used to propose inside uh, their place. The third one is uh, the research on youth work. And so we collected, for instance, some materials from Salto, from other uh, platform. And um, we found this section also important because uh, um, sometimes in, in the on the internet there are a lot, a lot of information, but sometimes it's, if it's difficult to find uh, um, this information. And we try to collect to collect the reliable results that can help youth workers, youth organization, but of course, why not also young people that can check in this website. Um, the second part of our work, so the first part was uh, this, uh, the creation of, of this database. The second part uh, is focused on a dream or ideal youth center. And this was uh, the part mostly addressed to young people because uh, uh, we create this uh, mm, a questionnaire. Uh, we propose uh, this questionnaire to youth workers inside the different youth centers. And um, of course, because uh, um, it's not so easy to imagine uh, maybe uh, from the scratch, from zero, what can be, which can be the desires of young people, uh, also about imagination, about their ideal youth center. Sometimes it's more easy to imagine if you can see maybe some examples all around Europe. So the, uh, the help of the youth workers close next to the young people that answered to this question was really uh, effective. And so uh, a total of 47 young people aged between 16 and 29 were interviewed and uh, they um, uh, and uh, thanks to their help of their imagination we could uh, create um, a collection about their ideal youth center uh, some of them maybe dreamt uh, a huge youth center uh, three floors so a huge building uh, um, Sometimes maybe they dream little, but we collected, uh, in this case, uh, all the, the functions and uh, um, offers that they would like to have in their youth center. So, um, um, going synthetically, uh, a welcoming area, for instance, uh, where maybe the host is uh, most present, because uh, the welcoming area is always the first contact. Uh, between young people and uh, youth workers and the, the space, a common room, an outdoor area, um, a space for a stage, a theater, uh, where, where young people can propose, uh, their, um, they can perform. A rehearsal room, a library and media room, uh, a sport area, so for uh, um, outdoor exercise and so on, a workshop room, um, a cafe kitchen inside, a creative room, and also other services, uh, like for instance, uh, a free access of Wi-Fi. Um, through these interviews, so, um, but also uh, with, in this case, uh, with the perspective of youth workers, uh, and we work uh, uh, to find uh, these uh, five key keywords uh, to describe uh, the main features uh, that the uh, um, youth center uh, need um, to have. Um, we work uh, on it uh, and uh, on the website uh, there is the, the full version of this. Uh, we work on it also in our transnational meeting, uh, for instance in, uh, in Sicily. Uh, a youth center uh, needs to be sustainable, uh, adaptable, innovative, accessible and multifunctional. Um, we try to classify and uh, to, um, to find uh, some features that maybe in the um, variety of, um, um, of youth centers that you can find all around Europe, uh, these are probably some recurrences, so some elements, uh, some uh, um, ideas that, that you can find in each 
space uh, on you can need in each uh, space. Um, about uh, our um, about our results, uh, we will speak uh, about it uh, during this day because uh, um, in the last section of um, our website uh, there is a. Uh, the main part of um, three documents results that we create among our partnership. The first time is about uh, spy, space, time, and conditions. And um, uh, it's a reflection uh, around uh, um, the space. Uh, when we speak about the space of a youth center, of course, this is a topic um, always connected with uh, um, public time, public time of con 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 uh, authorization uh, to stay inside a youth center, public times uh, related to contracts. So um, uh, we spoke a lot about uh, uh, the possibility to have a contract, uh, a long period contract uh, to develop uh, um, programs, because to develop programs for youngsters, uh, these need time. And um, so, because of this space, time and conditions related to um, public times. And um, yes, this is the first document that we created. The second one uh, is the profile of youth workers. And uh, also, about this, uh, um, we uh, reflect together because also um, it was really nice uh, to do these inter-transnational meetings uh, um, during this project because it was also an opportunity among us to reflect about uh, the different kind of profiles that um, you can find uh, in Europe. There are many, many different kind of uh, uh, regulation, but also um, um, uh, recognition of uh, this work. Um, in Italy, in Serbia, we saw that um, um, there is, a, a, for instance, a, another kind of educational path to become uh, a youth worker. Maybe it's more uh, a learning by doing process. Maybe it's focused more on uh, your personal experience. It's different, for instance, in Germany, where we have uh, um, um, a structured path to become a social worker or youth worker. So also this point, this um, document uh, was really important to, to propose because uh, it's a reflection that connects uh, also the different kind of roles uh, that you can find inside the figures of the youth workers. But um, we will see during this um, afternoon. Uh, the third document uh, is about uh, benefits uh, of supporting open youth work. Um, and uh, um, this document is more focused to uh, underline which kind of social benefits and uh, economical benefit and uh, political benefit um, you can achieve uh, supporting uh, open youth work um, in a short, in a medium and in a long period. Um, the final point of uh, our flow, of our project, uh, was uh, to build together, and this was uh, uh, a special work that we finalized during the last week uh, with the full uh, partnership uh, during the seminar. And um, this is uh, the final uh, statement, uh, or uh, uh, the final, um, I would say manifest, but statement maybe is better, uh, about uh, um, probably what we need from policy uh, to uh, support uh, open youth work, uh, what we need in terms of space, in terms of uh, time, in, term of, in terms of condition. And um, um, we collected many, um, so the main points, uh, and uh, we will show you during this afternoon, but uh, will be also a, um, an important moment of reflection and discussion together about this, um, uh, the importance to support open youth work. Um, I put also the, the link of our website. Um, right now we have, uh, we'll try to open if it's working. Ah, it's not here. So in this uh, website, uh, you can find uh, 
all the process flow. Uh, you can find all the material, in particular the database that was impossible to synthesize uh, now during the presentation. And, um, and also in the last uh, section, you can find uh, all the results uh, and uh, all the materials are uh, downloadable. And uh, this is the main tool and um, another tool that, uh, uh, ah, yes, is opening, yes. This is the website. Ah, oh, it's not visible, okay. So, I will come back. I think it's not possible. But this, okay. Yes. Uh, this web website is um, a collection of uh, all our results, and uh, as I show you the database, maybe I can uh, really fast, uh, if it's working, show you. Okay. We have many sections about uh, so all the um, information that we collected. Uh, from different countries and uh, from a different youth center. In each one, uh, you can find uh, um, um, all the, um, uh, yeah, the document with all the information that they provide us. And also, I, I would like to, after this project, uh, our goal uh, would be also to uh, continue to work on this website because, uh, okay, right now is a data collection about what we did until now, but for instance, the database can be implemented, and um, and also yes, in a, and also of course the the section about research uh, on youth work. In the final section, you can find all the results, and uh, here you can see that uh, there are many documents uh, downloadable, and also the um, the main one is the booklet that, but we have uh, we have it also on paper now. And um, also this one uh, um, can show in a detailed way uh, all the topics uh, that we faced together and uh, all, the, um, um, all the results. Um, yes. Well, has anyone got a question? The, the process of the project, or if not. <laughs> okay. Sorry, a few words for Chiara. Okay. And all of you. To everyone who's trying to get a German signal on the live stream, we're working it. It's not on our website. It does work. It's bilingual. Unfortunately, not unfortunately not visible. I repeat the invitation. If there are other youth centers that are missing in the database. Tell us, we are presenting 25, so the database is not even covering all 38. Here of our district, we are actually interested in gathering more data, gathering more information to provide, provide a more complete overview. We'll have 15 minutes coffee break now. You see the coffee urn there in the bar, and we've got tea and juice and water. We resume at 11 sharp, so the people in the live stream don't have to wait so long anymore. And you can quickly imagine, Chiara has worked since 
Anfang September offiziell bei uns, war davor Freiwilligendienstleistende im Rahmen des Europäischen Solidaritätskorps, furchtbarer neuer Name, früher bekannt als European Voluntary Service oder Europäischer Freiwilligendienst. Ähm, genau. Und die Begeisterung war so riesig, dass sie einfach bleiben durfte. Ähm, als nächstes wird ähm, Jovan Samuilov äh, uns äh, vorstellen, was wir zum Thema Räume und Ausstattung erarbeitet äh, haben. Äh, Jovan ist äh, Vorsitzender eines Vereins, der heißt Orange, das ähm, Orange, Naranjasti. Und äh, mit dem arbeiten wir schon seit 2005 in Projekten zusammen, international. Also es ist eine sehr lange Freundschaft auch. Genau. Ich wünsche Thank you, sir. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Jovan. As Martin said, uh, I come from Serbia, from Pancho. It's a city north of Belgrade. It's a Vojvodina region. I mention this because uh, it is a bit relevant to uh, something that we actually try to do on this project about the conditions, about the different... Uh, uh, things that, that we have or don't have comparing, comparing to the others. Uh, I used to be a teacher, so I know when the lecture is boring. So I will try not to be too long and too much. I will, as we have a saying, try to make short and sweet. And uh, especially because Chiara did, did so good job about uh, presenting the whole project and uh, the website. So basically, she helped me a lot. So I can just point out uh, the few things that we think that are necessary. Uh, she explained the, the process of our work. So we wanted to have uh, opinions, not just from the youth workers and people who are involved in youth work, but we also wanted to have uh, opinions and, and uh, to see how the other people uh, think about uh, youth work, open youth work and youth centers. Uh, so we included, of course, the youngsters and we wanted to have some uh, insight of what the politicians need to know on universities. So my job is uh, to present you the, the youth workers point of view. Uh, When we start working, uh, immediately we realize that we come from different realities, from different conditions. So our approach uh, would be a bit different for each one of, each, uh, one of us. For example, uh, as Chiara already mentioned, in some countries uh, you have a clear path to become a youth worker, but in others, uh, mostly don't exist, or it's very difficult, or it's like uh, what you can do for yourself to make yourself a, a youth worker. So for that reason, we, we start to, to brainstorming and try to see what are the, the conditions that we need for, for a, let's say, it ideal youth center, considering the facilities and resources. And a few, few interesting point uh, immediately come in front uh, because uh, we all agreed even if we come from dif different realities that these are the things that are important for each one of us for each reality that needs to be included in the functioning in, in the youth center that is uh, equipped to work properly so the first thing that we were thinking about it is the space. But of course, uh, we are now in, in the beautiful Anna Landsberger. And you can see the, the, uh, the space inside or outside. But we also realize that uh, the space is, is necessary, but it's not everything. So it needs to be uh, used in a proper way. And uh, from my own experience, 
when I mentioned Anna Landsberger, I, as Martin said, we cooperate for a long time. And I was coming here for a long time since the Rotterbaum start working in this space. So I can really see that, uh, that point, that space is not everything, but it's very necessary. And uh, the, the other point that we come to that is very important is the time. Uh, for example, uh, if you have an ideal space with the all equipment that you need, but uh, it's a very short amount of time that you can use it. There is not much possibility for you to do any serious work and to make any, any kind of impact. So, Chiara also mentioned, we come to the conclusion that uh, for the space it's necessary uh, to have some kind of long-term contract Five years would be minimum. That is also uh, applied to, to the contracts of the youth workers. Uh, we had uh, many sessions and we come to conclusion that some of us have short-term contracts and it's really hard to, to plan anything in the future if you have three months contract or uh, half a year or even a year. And the same goes also for the spaces. And uh, we understood that uh, the longer period of time is necessary to make a contact with the youngsters, to make a contact with the community, and uh, at the end to be able to measure the result. Because if it's short amount of time, for sure you would be able to, to see did you manage to create any change or uh, improve the conditions in the, in the local community. So it's necessary to have uh, enough time to do that. And uh, the third point that we come to is, uh, the, is it's, a, it's a term of the uh, shared ownership. We need to share the ownership of the space with the people who are actually using it. So uh, this is also connected very much with the, with the time, because if it's a short amount of time, for sure you cannot uh, create that effect that you, that you want to have. Uh, everything that you see is very nicely put in, in our website. Uh, this, these points that we have are made to, to be understandable for people who are not fr from this field, who are not from the field of youth work. As uh, Martin said at the beginning, and uh, our partner from Romania, Cosmi, suggested during the work, we need to dumb it down to make it simple so that uh, everybody understand. I, I guess lots of you that are included in, in youth work come to that problem when you need to explain what are you doing. And this was the point to make it simple so that people can understand what we are doing and what, we are, what are our needs that we can do our work. And one of the basic needs is the space. So uh, that you can really nice see uh, in the nice website that we have in this booklet that was prepared for you. So without delaying uh, the time for questions, I would like to, to give you opportunity if you want to share something or to ask something about, about what you can see in this nice booklet and, and uh, on our website. If there are no questions, that means that we have done a nice job. I can talk more about lots of stuff, but it was a long time ago. Yeah, as I mentioned before, since we come from different realities, uh, we had a really nice opportunity to share a lot, to share about conditions, to share about the way the, the, the youth centers and the youth work were f uh, getting the money. Uh, or uh, the resources for work. 
So uh, it's, it was really nice experience to, to be able to share this with people from, from different countries, from different realities. And uh, we hope that we will be able to implement something or to improve something in our own realities, thank, thanks to this. So I would like to thank our hosts and all people who participated, the people who are following us online. And that would be it for me. Thank you. Well, I would like to point out that it's a, it was especially important for us to point out that the rooms, the space must be accessible for young people. And that means not only to have a door which is open all the time, but it should also be designed in a way where young people feel at home or welcomed. It also means that on the one hand, it should be designed by oneself. And on the other hand, there should also be an opportunity to be there in a familiar atmosphere. Because the main point why young people uh, come to those, such places is chilling. And on that basis, a lot can be done. But this is a very important starting point. Otherwise, you won't reach out to the young people. They won't make them coming and staying. And this was especially important to point out. And this is just what I wanted to add because I feel this is extremely important to me and should. Now I would like to introduce Cosmin to you. He's got his very individual experience with independence from political decision makers in the recent days. And I'm sure he will tell you a bit more about that if there is time to do so. And he will also speak about the role of youth work. And he's got the floor now. First challenge of the day. <laughs> Hi, everybody, and thank you, Martin, for the wonderful introduction. Uh, I wasn't uh, necessarily planning on talking about uh, all the challenges that we're facing in our youth work. Um, but I would still want to, to start with thanking everyone for being here and for leaning a listening ear to what we've been working on, and not only to that, but also uh, to what young people around Europe think that they need, feel that they need, and how things should be. And I'm saying this based on, uh, I, uh, I would like to remind you what Chiara was uh, explaining earlier, that we have had a European-wide research. It hadn't been done in all uh, the countries of the EU. It actually went a little bit further all over the borders of the EU. And we believe that this was a relevant research with young people and not only, but also with youth workers working in youth centers in order to understand how things should look like. Um, there is this, uh, there's this thing that we are talking about when we are talking in Romania about youth work. Uh, that is, we might have a very, very clear idea of what, should, of what youth work should be. And we might be extremely confident in our competencies and in our uh, ability to do stuff, and we believe that we are the most competent people to do youth work. And that is really nicely explained in the Dunning-Kruger effect, in the Dunning-Kruger theory, that says that the most incompetent that you are, the more competent you think you are. So we believe that we need to ask young people what youth work should be, and to ask other youth workers what youth work should be, um, because it's not about us. It's about them. 
And uh, we would need to understand, and this is, uh, um, yeah, I, would, I, I would like to, to say this to all people out there that are working with young people. Um, just remember it's not about you, it's about them. We are just tools to help them go over this period <clears throat> that might be one of the, uh, one of the most difficult periods of, uh, of a person's life. Um, so we've done this research, we've asked people how things should be. Uh, and in terms of spaces, Jovan made a really nice presentation earlier, concluding with sharing ownership of the space. This is also based on the idea, Danke Martin. Uh, this is also based on the idea that it, it's not for uh, us that we're working, it's for other people. And the ownership, translating uh, shared ownership in plain English would be helping young people uh, become the masters of their own space. And based on these two ideas, we've been asking them, guys, look, you've been participating in youth work activities and you've been participating in youth exchanges, you've been participating in uh, outdoor activities, you've been participating in hopefully school activities as well. Uh, how would you like to be treated and to be greeted when you enter a youth center. And we have 55 young people around Europe that have been answering this question. And based on their, question, based on their, uh, based on their answers, uh, we have identified a few traits that youth workers involved in open youth work, and just as a, a little bit of a side conversation, uh, thank God for English, because in Romanian, it, to translate open youth work is a complete nightmare. It would make absolute no sense to translate it directly, so we need to, something, we need to think about something better. Um, these traits that um, young people have uh, expressed that they would like to, to, to meet uh, when they meet youth workers have been summed up. Uh, in a few roles that we have designed for the open youth worker, for the youth worker that is doing open youth work. Uh, and just to, just to be clear on, again, translating into plain, uh, into plain English what open youth work is for everybody, uh, not necessarily here in the room, but especially for people there uh, watching us online. It's that thing when youngsters at the first contact with youth activities enter the space and what happens next. This is what we're thinking when we're thinking about open youth work and the roles that we're giving to youth workers in this context. Uh, so these traits, um, we've summed, we've, we have summed them up in, uh, in a few roles. Um, one of the most important of them is the role of the host. When you are going to visit your parents or uh, your mother-in-law or your father-in-law, how do they greet you there? And depending on cultural traits, depending on the country, it might be, uh, would you like something to eat? That's us. Food is really important in our culture. Then it, would, it might be another country. Um, would you like a coffee? And I believe this fits for Italy. Or um, are you okay? Would you like to rest a little bit? These are, and I'm, when, I'm, I'm, when I'm referring to parents and to in-laws, I'm referring to people that are used to being hosts. They are hosts in their own homes and you are visiting. This is exactly what's happening with youngsters in, um, in youth centers that are coming in for the first time. They are being visitors the first time. They do not have ownership. The space is not theirs. How do we manage this relationship in order to encourage them to take 
advantage of the space to take ownership and the responsibility for themselves into this space. Uh, so the host is the first role that we have identified for the youth workers that is of super, super high importance. Um, the host is the person that is going to say, hello, please come in. Or is going to say, hey, welcome. Welcome to our new youth center. Welcome to uh, your space. Uh, this is what's happening here. These are the people that are responsible. These are the other young people. Look, that guy names uh, is Martin. This is Alex and this is Andre. Would you like to join them in an, acti in an activity? This makes the first impression, and the first impression is really important. Um, for the host, and we have developed, um, we have went a little bit in depth on the host and one of the other roles in order to, to explain and just to make sure that it's really clear what we mean uh, with these roles. Uh, we do have a set of recommendations for the host and that is to be flexible and calm. And even if some people might look scary, they should act like they're not. Um, the main trait of the host and of the other uh, youth workers working in the youth center is to be approachable. Because in terms of youngster, if I would be a young person, and somebody would look scary, I would probably not go there. And we've been asking young people about how they would like to be greeted. And one of the, uh, one of the most common answers is warm. The behavior needs to be warm. And this warm may be, it's not warm as in blood warm or like the thing, it's warm as in warmth. Um, this trait is uh, extremely important. And this is also culture dependent because in Romania, warmth might be one thing. In Sweden, <laughs> warmth might be something else. Uh, so all our recommendations need to be adapted to the local cultural context. But warmth is something that has been encountered in almost all the young people's answers. They need a person that is warm. And we as youth workers need to make ourselves available for them. We need to be approachable. They need to feel no resistance in order to come talk to somebody. And I'm emphasizing again this thing for the uh, for the role of the host. The host is the person, the first contact of, uh, of the youth center doing open youth work, and it's pretty much the uh, business card of uh, what's happening there. Um, open youth centers need other people as well, not just the host. But because it's, uh, youth work is so different, in, uh, in all our countries. We understand that youth centers cannot employ all the people that we have described roles for. Yet these are some roles that uh, fewer people can take and they are described in order to be uh, able to be performed. <clears throat> Another one, uh, one of the other roles uh, that we, we've been uh, discussing during the project is the role of the facilitator. The facilitator is the person that is engaging youngsters in activities. After passing through the host, we have the facilitator that is engaging the youngsters. And the facilitator is uh, making an activity look, inter uh, look interesting. It's making an activity be relevant and it's the, the facilitator is encouraging youngsters to take part. There is a lot of knowledge that goes behind, knowledge and skills that go behind the role of the facilitator. And we invite you to uh, go over the really nice brochure that we have. I'm just gonna... 
we invite you to go over the Vinny Nice brochure that we have um, done, in which these two roles, the, whole, the, the, the host and the facilitator, are uh, described in depth, um, as probably it would not be the moment to go in depth now. But if you have any questions for later, you can write them down, and we would be more than happy to, to answer to the questions. Um, the facilitator needs to have like this set of competencies. Um, and that is because young people need to respond in their own way, and the facilitator would need to treat uh, uh, youngsters as individuals and not as a group uh, of people or a bunch of people. Therefore, knowledge and group dynamics, youth psychology are, uh, are needed. But then it's, uh, it's this amazing space called an open youth center and we have we already have the host, we have the facilitator. Do we need other people in this youth center? And thank you for, uh, there's somebody in the back there yelling, yes, we need more people, yes. Uh, we do need more people, we, need, we do need more roles. Um, we do need someone that is going to make resources available to us. Uh, and here we're talking about two uh, two types of, uh, of resources. We're talking about financial resources, therefore we have the fundraiser, we have the person that is getting the money in, and we have the logistician. We might have some guitars and uh, uh, ping pong games, uh, table tennis games, but we have no idea where they are, so we need the logistician to help us out with organizing activities. Um, and maybe this person, the logistician, is also uh, skilled into fixing stuff. And they can, uh, and I'm not going to say what we are doing in our youth center, but maybe they can uh, uh, screw back the handle on a cooking pot or something like that. I'm just not going to uh, start disclosing what we are doing as logisticians in our youth centers. Um, <coughs> We, we also need um, the programs, the activities, and uh, the results that we have to be communicated, both inside uh, the youth center, but mainly outside the youth center. And this is when we really need a communicator. We need the person that is going to make sure that the message and the information is going to reach young people in their way, in their style, and uh, on their own channels. I am an old person. I'm using Facebook. So I need help. Even this is uh, not a triple A anonymous meeting, I do need help with communicating the stuff that we do at the youth center. Um, so we need a communicator. Do you know about Facebook? Do you know Facebook? Yeah? Thank God. Do you know Instagram? Yes. Good. Do you know Discord? <laughs> Some people know Discord. Are you using, you personally, I'm uh, talking to the people here in the audience, are you using TikTok and Snapchat? You need a communicator as well. <laughs> uh, and this is, this, uh, the, these are the things that we've learned the hard way by trying to communicate in uh, the improper channels that are not being used by youngsters anymore. And when we asked young people um, about what would be the communication channels that they would like to have, probably uh, somebody might think everybody answered Instagram, everybody answered uh, TikTok. No, man. It's a list like this. Everybody has their own ways of getting their own information. So we do need a communicator in the youth center just to make sure that people get the message. And there's one more uh, that we have been 
thinking about and that we have uh, identified as important. Um, and I would, I would just like to, to read something here, and because I understand that this is a German thing. Um, youth workers have often to be egg-laying, wool-giving milk cows. And this because probably most of uh, the youth workers are also taking on the role of the coordinator and coordinating activities, coordinating resources, and making everything come together with purpose and a purpose that makes sense for young people. And yeah, this thing, this German thing, makes complete sense. Egg laying, wool giving, milk cows. How many people uh, in the audience here that are working as youth workers and how many people that are watching us online right now? You don't have to raise your hands, just think about it. How many of you are fulfilling multiple roles out of the ones that we have described so far. It's just food for thought. And it's not just food for thought. And I'm going to open up the conversation for uh, Vincenzo for later on. This is also a cry for help. This is a cry for help, for, for support, in order to be able to have people, resources, human resources, that would fill in these roles and that would actually work with young people on young people's terms, on young people's time, in young people's spaces, and most importantly, in young people's language. Mind the language. Um, I've been asking earlier if I can uh, use some, uh, some words and I've been told no. Um, there are very serious differences in the language that we are using, that I am using, because probably you're using different language, um, and the language that young people are using. And this is why uh, I am emphasizing at this point, on the role of the host and the facilitator, mind the language. Keep an eye open to what's happening in uh, FIFA, FIFA 21, PlayStation or computer, whatever you want. Keep an eye open on what's happening on Netflix and on other channels. Uh, no adver advertising intended here, sorry. Um, and keep an eye open on YouTube and who are the local influencers the national influencers, what is the language that they are using. And if you get the magical power to turn into a little fly, just to be able to see how they're writing to each other, because uh, especially in the past two years, they're not talking to each other anymore, they're just writing, uh, to see what's the language. Because making yourself available as a youth worker to young people means speaking their language, besides a lot of other uh, things. Uh, keep track with what is interesting for youngsters. Do you know Fortnite? Well, if you don't know it, get to know it. If you don't like computer games, you don't have to like them, but you have to try them it's going to give you an opening point in a conversation with youngsters that are not interested in the stuff that you might be interested in. Um, and I also understand that there's some more video games that have uh, a lot of impact these days. I don't know which one those are. So just before we open the conversation, and I would uh, I really like to invite you to think of um, what more would you like to know about these roles that we have designed. Um, imagine a school trip that is not a school trip. It's a youth center trip. 
but you have this, when I say school trip, probably you have this image of the bus with, yeah, with kids going inside, going somewhere. <clears throat> Who are the kids in the back of the bus? Who are the kids in the back of the bus? The cool kids. Always the cool kids are going to be in the back of the bus. Um, if I'm going to be talking about um, probably the fact that in Romania at this point we still do not have a government after three weeks, uh, I'm definitely not going to interest them. I'm not going to interest you either. You don't care what's happening with the government in Romania, and it's a fair point. But 185 elephants enter a bar. What does the bartender say? We're fresh out of toilet paper. Adapt. Get their interest and make sure that we speak the same language. That's my uh, final, my final thought at this point. We have been working <clears throat> in Romania uh, with uh, one youth center first, a second youth center uh, then, which means that we're running two youth centers now. And starting last year, we have also opened a mobile youth center. And the skills that uh, the skills that the youth workers in the youth centers need and the skills that the youth workers in the mobile youth center need are different. Imagine that you, have, you are here in Anna and it's a safe space, it's a secure space. Uh, people are coming in, hello, how are you doing? This is, uh, this is the lounge, you have the foosball table right there. But when you're going with a mobile center, when you're going with a van, it's a van. It's a big ass van that has all the equipment that a regular youth center would have. And you go put it somewhere on a street or on a back alley, or as we do it, we just put it in the middle of nowhere uh, because we're working in a rural area in Romania, serving uh, communities that are, I don't know, maybe 50 inhabitants and 12 of, 12 of them are young people. Um, the context is different. The youth work skills that are necessary with these different contexts, of course, they will be different. And this is what we're inviting you now to think of your own context of, uh, of youth work and of open youth work. Uh, to check out our profiles and the description of the profiles and see if there's something else that you might be able to add or something else that you have experienced in your, uh, in your practice as a youth worker so that we can put everything together and it's just adding value to the stuff that we have already done. I will prepare myself for questions now by drinking a little bit of water. Maybe you want to think about the questions, I don't know. Because if you don't have questions, I'm going to keep speaking. And I have nothing else prepared, so probably it's just going to be jokes. Well, that was a full 20 minutes. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much, and we will be here for you uh, for the next few hours if you or the people online have any questions. Um, please download or uh, this would be the moment in which I would invite you to buy this nice brochure, but no, you can actually download it for free on youthcenters.eu. Uh, you will find it there. Check it out, and then we're going to be here for your questions or feedback. Thank you, Martin, and thank you, Erasmus Plus, for giving us this opportunity. Perhaps, perhaps you stay a bit. Oi. 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 Yeah. Uh, 
short explanation. In the, when we planned everything in this project, uh, we had in mind one event we implemented in 2019 in the University for Applied Science, Ali Salomon. And this was the idea to copy-paste the event we did there just to make the different content. In that moment, we had the idea to be together with 150, 200 people. That was happening in that year. But there is, we faced, let's say, in the last two years, few obstacles. One of it was that till one month ago, we were even not sure if it will be possible to implement an event like this here and today. So, and still it is impossible to work in the university because it's simply closed. And uh, so anyway, I'm quite happy that uh, we are still cooperating with them. Um, Professor Dr. Justis will come here for the um, afternoon session. Uh, but this, all of this made that now the timing, it's a bit, uh, let's say, off, out of control. <laughs> because usually, if you, if you have uh, 250 people working in the social science, you have at least 125 which like to talk and to discuss a lot. But now the majority of the people here in the room, it's people that were already discussing five days about this. So that's why uh, most probably the questions are not that big. Um, for this reason, I would like to suggest that uh, the partners that are here can shortly introduce and tell their personal, not personal, but uh, professional problems. Especially yours, it's quite interesting. Uh, yeah, thank you, Martin, for opening the floor for that. Uh, this is already not in the... It's not in the funny registry anymore. Uh, even if I'm smiling, it's uh, this thing that uh, it's happening to Romanians. It's a cultural trait. Uh, we say that Facem has the nekaz, which means that we're making fun of the trouble that we're going through, just to make it bearable, usually. Uh, at this point, I was I was telling you earlier that we're uh, we're running two uh, two youth centers and the mobile youth center. Um, one of them is private property, and because it's a private property, it is independent from any local uh, or national regulations, as long as we don't face another. Uh, nationalization of private property. The second one, it is an example of best practice of cooperation between a local institution, uh, the town hall, and an NGO, that would be our case. Curba de Cultura is, uh, is an NGO, fully independent and fully private, established in, uh, in 2012 in a small village in Romania, 120 kilometers north of Bucharest. Um, last year, with the help of international volunteers and the help of the European Solidarity Corps, we have renovated, uh, completely renovated, a space that used to be a kindergarten, and it wasn't used for a few years, and we have turned it into a youth center offering it to the youngsters in, uh, in the community of Teishang. This is another village, also 100-something kilometers north of Eucharist. Uh, and the youngsters have been participating in activities, opening the door just to check it out, or just uh, sitting on the benches outside and uh, making out. Um, this year, a month ago, the local council has voted to take out of the two rooms that we have in the youth center, that's one room for socializing and the other one is a multimedia room. Uh, the local council has voted to take the socializing room uh, and to transform it into a room for local council meetings and taking the other one to make it a rehearsal space 
for the local folklore dances group that was established a month and a half ago. Uh, it is indeed uh, not the brightest of the situations. And I would, uh, if somebody would ask me to talk about best practices in uh, youth work in Romania, I would give the example of last year's project when we, had, we have had the support of the town hall um, and the town hall and the local council have given us uh, a space to renovate and to transform into, into a youth center and they've given it uh, to us for five years. I would talk about this. I would love to talk about this. But then there's also the other side of the coin when eight months later uh, the same local council is voting us out after we have renovated the space. And this is one of the things that... Remember earlier I was telling you about um, keeping in mind that it's not about you and it's about young people. And that is because you have a special status, you have uh, a certain authority, and you also have power you have the power to do this or that. And it's the same thing with the local council. They have the power to do this. Is it fair? No. Is it right? No. Do they have the power to do this? Yes. Is this the recipe for abuse of power? Probably. When those people that, those people, that have some sort of power, do not take into consideration the needs and interests of the people that do not have that power. I would actually like to end on a positive note, not on this one. <laughs> um, and the positive note is that with this youth center, uh, that they're taking away from us. We have connected young people that didn't know each other before. They have visited through the activities provided within the youth center. They have visited other countries for the first time. They have met people from other cultures for the first time because it's an international youth center. There's at all times at least 10 international people there be them volunteers that are working with us, or our staff that is also mainly international. The Romanians are also uh, uh, some sort of a dying species in the staff of Curba de Cultura. Uh, it's a minority of Romanians in the staff. The, so it may, this is an international youth center. And youngsters from a community of 1,200 people uh, are able to go in, practice English, meet people from other cultures, and most of all, most important, learn tolerance and cultural differences. This is what they're taking away from them, not from us. Having the opportunity of meeting and traveling together and uh, having experiences together, some of the youngsters have traveled by train for the first time in their lives. I'm not going to mention that they've been outside of the country for the first time, but it's traveling by train, which for some people in this room, or for probably most of the people uh, watching us online, I, I now see that there's another camera there, I don't know which one to. Um, it's something that is granted, just like for other people probably in this room and watching us online, uh, having a youth space, having a youth center, is also something that is taken as for granted. It's not. There is a lot of work <clears throat> and there is a lot of resources involved in making this happen. And this is just, this is not for us because we're working here. 
this is not for the people that are watching us because probably most of them are youth workers and they know how much work is behind uh, the nice face of the host. It's for everybody else that might be watching and uh, that they're not involved in youth work. This is a lot of work. It's not for granted. It's a lot of resources. Help young people be the best that they can be by providing them with spaces and resources so that they can make mistakes and learn from them in a safe and secure environment. This is what we're talking about. And this is what we're trying to, uh, to provide to the youngsters in our community. Youngsters that have uh, grown like the magical horse in the fairy tales. Probably you don't have this, it's just a Romanian reference. Uh, when this magical creature is going to outgrow everybody else in three days and it's like they will grow in three days like others are growing in three years. This is what's happening on a social level with the social development of youngsters in our youth centers. Uh, and the positive note, well, I cannot find it right now. <laughs> the positive note is that um, we are going with the mobile youth center in some communities <clears throat> around the youth centers because young people cannot afford to come to the youth center because getting on the public transport costs money and uh, if it's outside of the route for going to school, they have to pay. Uh, which means that they would have to pay to come to the youth center. And this we have, men we have noticed in, uh, in the last years, actually starting from the beginning, that they, uh, they don't, they're not coming. Why are you not coming? And finally, when you get to the answer that I don't have the money to do that, I don't have the money to pay for transport, then it's start, things start to get really small. <laughs> what can we do in order to do that? So we, we have turned this uh, uh, Volkswagen Crafter into a mobile youth center and we're going to communities, as I told you before, that are 50 people. Uh, and sometimes we are showing movies. Youngsters that are 16, 17, coming at the end of the movie projection and thanking us for showing a movie because they have never, ever been to a cinema. This is something that makes it worthwhile. When, and the thing that we're trying to do is to build youth supportive communities. Young people need to feel supported. And we have a saying, in, uh, in raising a child, it takes a village. It does. And this is why we believe that building support, youth supportive communities is the answer. Is it going to be easy? Hell no. But it's definitely worth the effort. Thank you, and thank you, Martin, for the opportunity. Yeah, thank you, Cosmin. Um, thank you, Cosmin. I've been talking about the challenges, problems, issues we've been facing. Another one was that we wanted to organize an actual youth meeting within the project because talking about youth work without actually involving young people is useless, totally useless. And for that reason, we had applied for having a youth meeting and we will have it. And the results will also be presented on the website. However, it will not have influence on our work for the booklet. For that reason, we did the interviews. 55 doesn't listen 
like so much hard work, but it was hard work because these were long interviews with the young people. On the website, you get very brief summaries, but there's a lot of work behind those summaries. And that youth meeting will take us to the youth center we just heard about, and I'm really, really wondering how our Berlin participants will react to being in such a village. That will be truly interesting, I'm sure. I'm Jovan. Uh, tell about your youth center and the problem with the changing directors. So it's me again. Uh, I guess uh, it's not uncommon thing to, to have this kind of problematics that uh, that we are facing because uh, I'm currently working with the city youth center with that three months contract. Every three months there is possibility to be prolonged or not. And since we are uh, established and founded by the city, so decision to to name the director, it's uh, in the uh, hands of politicians. So they make that decision without any real knowledge or uh, needs of youngsters or even of a youth center. So sometimes that can be a good choice, sometimes not so good. But the problem is that even directors, whoever they are, they don't know how long they will stay there. So they're also not able to give us any guidings or help us to do any planning for a long term. So this is something that we come across with when we are working together. As a reality there that is connected with, with our country, with our situation. Especially since in Serbia the youth work is not recognized as a job. At least uh, till... Uh, Two or three years ago, I, I'm, I think that all of you have uh, that uh, national code system for different jobs. So from three years ago or something like that, it was possible. There is a code for youth worker, but nobody gets it till now, and nobody knows how to become one, because there are no clear path to school system to, to get that kind of uh, education and training, so mostly people who are involved are, uh, how to say, self-built through these kind of projects and seminars and trainings. And for me, that is like the biggest problem for, uh, for youth working in our country because uh, there are some roof associations that deal with this topic, but the state doesn't show much interest in it. And the way that you can see that is through naming directors of these, uh, let's call it state youth centers. So I cannot finish on the happy note with anything. It's, it is what it is. Thank you. Well, I just would like to add one thing because there was really an, a very annoying aspect to that. Two years ago, with the approval of the director of the youth center, we installed an open space in that youth center. So we bought um, couches and we um, sprayed colorful um, things to the walls. And as a result of that, two months later, the director was changed. And a new director said, no, an open meeting point is something I don't want to have here. We were going to, uh, in, uh, to offer courses for, um, for, train, for dancing and painting. And if you don't agree to that, we will close the whole center. So uh, what is behind that is that you need reliability. And uh, you really need experienced good people who are those to determine what's going to happen. Now, I'm really... 
uh, helpless, how to bridge the gap until lunch will arrive. Perhaps I could add one thing. In Germany, we have comparably mm, excellent conditions, like in paradise. That is both true for the amount of resources and finances and equipment. But I also mm, think that we are relatively independent politically with regard to any influence on our work by politicians. And after what I've heard here in the last uh, two years, and even that I knew that before, that's why we actually launched that project. So it's really important to me to point out that the paper has been produced, that this short version, which hopefully we will have time to discuss more in detail later, is there, and that we are now going to try to have it translated uh, into all languages required because understandability does not just mean to dump it down. It also means to put it into the language which then can be understood by those who make the decisions. And therefore, I hope that this will find your wide agreement so that we really can spread it as our wish list they are not even exaggerated. We don't even put there that we need so much money and so on. We just wrote down that we want to be able to work in the long run and independently. So, well, for me, it just remains um, to just tell you that we can open the break now. Also, for the live stream, you will have two hours of break, but it's worthwhile coming back later because Profeta, Professor Dr. Justice will give you quite a good insight into the history of the needs for youth work and the challenges which even we are facing. I told you that we are living like in paradise, but when money is saved, we would be the first area to tackle. And so I think you can really be looking forward to that presentation. In the meantime, we will use the time to have little chats and conversations, and we will be waiting for the lunch to come. It will be potato salad and minced meat. Professor Dr. Joost, she's a professor at the Lisan uh, uh, University for Social Work, and she's professor for social, cultural work and music. And we invited you to talk to us because already mm, two or three years ago, we had the experience that it is really helpful to get an insight into your understanding of youth work and the problems coming along with that. So you have the floor. Hello, thank you, Martin Kleinfelder, for inviting me. and all over Europe and in Germany. Also, ich freue mich sehr, dass diese Tagung stattfindet stark gemacht wird in Europa und auch hier in Deutschland. Auch in Deutschland hat sie Stärkung. In Germany too, youth work needs to be strengthened, even though it is extremely important. And this will be my core message in my talk as well. I want to shed light um, on this subject uh, from different backgrounds um, uh, and advocating for a strong lobby and free youth space. And this also includes free youth work when you look at it from the professional point of view. Maybe just briefly, let me introduce myself as well. 
I'm working at the Ali Salomon College. This is the oldest. Mm, it was in the past a, a school for applied social studies. It was founded as a special shoe school for women by Alice Salomon. She did not only invent the profession of social work and established it in Germany, she also was really well connected internationally. And as this is also an international forum, I think it fits perfectly. And the Alice Salomon College has several chairs for cultural work and across Germany. This is the case now. And we have uh, theater, media, uh, arts, and music. And I'm in chair of the last area since 2003. In the time before, before, before I had my professor thesis, I did youth work myself for many years, always focusing on cultural work. That means that practice is well known to me, and I still have strong connections with people in practice, especially in the field of music. We have a work group for popular music and culture, which we founded in the middle of the 90s, where I'm also very actively working in the network. And thanks to my students, which I also have as trainees and starters in the profession, we still keep contacts, among others, also with Martin Kleinfelder. Actually, my talk is very long, but Martin Kleinfelder wished me to give you the full presentation. There are three parts, and after each one, I will have a break. The one is the, big, the part looking back to the history of open youth work in Germany. Certainly, this might be interesting for people from other countries, because then you may look into this and compare it with your own histories. And for us, it's sometimes also not very clear what the different routes are and what we have in common when it comes to youth work in Germany. And this will be, this will be the first part. And the second part will be about how youth is actually seen as, as from the social point of view in Germany. In Germany, they have regular uh, reports about youth and children um, edited by a group of experts, and they will be the guideline for promoting youth work in Germany. And I would like to present the outcome of the 15th report about child care and youth, along with some theoretical debates around the subject, and I will also tell you what the expert commission and research has actually been telling us about the situation of youth. The pand pandemic and uh, COVID conditions is something I will keep to the very end because you know this uh, from your practical work, what the challenges are. The COVID pandemic shows like a magnifying glass, the good things and the bad things. The third subject will be the profile of youth work, focusing on cultural work, which, because this is my main topic. And so these will be the three main parts of my presentation. The photograph, as I'm talking about cultural work with you young people in Germany, and this is a photo made by a colleague of mine. There are Italians in this room, and I was told that this is a graffiti from Sardinia. Well, just when looking back to the history of open youth work in Germany, let me start with the emperor's, uh, the empire at the end of the last century when Germany still had an empire and an, and an emperor. Well, that's the overview of my talk. Let me start telling you something about the time of open youth work in the German Empire and in the Weimar Republic. Open youth work has been established in Central Europe since the end of the 19th century and had always been 
a classic field of work, of social work. In Germany, it started mainly at the beginning of the 20th century, namely at the time of the German Empire. At that time, of course, they did not have uh, cultural centers for young people like we know them today, but there were rather places like uh, urban youth homes and clubs, but open youth houses very soon later. And already in 1901, the work was, of course, part of the law. It was um, later, uh, it was enacted as the welfare legislation in Germany. So there was youth care by the state, and there was, in parallel with that, there were always some free associations. In Germany, we always have these two sides of youth work and social work. On the one hand, the municipal organizations and the free associations. The free associations prevail normally, but the two sides do exist. And the first offers for open youth work were directed mainly uh, uh, towards male youth of the lower social strata and mainly in urban environments. Uh, let me quote. Those people were called uh, unadapted, uh, asocial, and left, left, left alone. They were stigmatized and labeled negatively. And on top of that, in the big cities at times of industrialization, they were also concerned about the way of social life between these people. They were called gangs, and those were focused or were meant to be focused and supervised, so practically in order to protect society from these people. That was one of the motivations. And the youth clubs were also about to open access for male youngsters trying to integrate those people. Sometimes even this is still mm, formulated today, but one can have a critical point of view when it's just about adapting them to the rest of the society. And mainly they were focusing on three groups, proletarian youth, which were affected by unemployment and poverty. Then there were some young cultural groups who stood out for violence and young and, and gang crime. And the third point was also always very important. That was the organized youth in association, be it um, communists or confessional associations by denomination, etc. They had their own places to go, like youth homes, etc. So all these different levels existed in Germany. For cultural work among youth and self-organization, a very important movement was the a young youth movement which was called Wandervögel, is kind yes, is kind of scouts. And this is uh, the name of those groups. It was Wandervögel. And they were mainly based on the or targeting the bourgeois youth, those who were criticizing the effects of industrialization and the decadence of the empire. Actually, they were criticizing their parents and the way they lived. They claimed self-administration as an independent group of young people. And that was actually new to talk about youth, because that trans transitory period was rather short, mostly they ended school and entered the job very soon, and youth was over also very soon. So claiming time to be young was a privilege of the bourgeois youth at the time. And at this time, they also claimed for room for developing their own interests and youth culture. This is what we would say, tell, call it today. Those Scouts called Wandervögel, they just took the guitar, at that time it was, well, a guitar, and they also compiled their own books with German songs for the German listeners. Uh, the title might be interesting. Uh, the first one was called Zupfgeigenhansel, and the first group 
actually emerged in Berlin Steglitz and then they left Berlin, went into nature, into the environment, they were dancing, singing and making music. And since then there had been more and more independent youth associations which were founded outside schools. And this also um, came together with some um, inspirations by uh, reform educators. And apart from that, there were also some politically motivated um, associations, which were the youth wings of the parties, amongst them the socialist or communist youth organizations. Those were really marking the situation of young people. So when young people are getting uh, culturally active, it may be great, but it does not necessarily have to be seen as something positive, and the same is true today. At that time, one knew of the Wandervögel because uh, females were actually in the minority, and so it became known that they were rather nationalist young men, and how many like many men at the time um, loved to go for war and uh, according to people, what people were saying, they were singing when they were going to the front lines. And so this is also part of youth movement at the time. That was the time of the First World War, by the way. And the free associations, young culture of the last century, were then continuing during the time of the Weimar Republic in Germany, but some of them were rather prone to being uh, captured by the right-wing parties and extremist parties by National Socialism, that is. It was very easy to integrate them into National Socialist propaganda and for instance, uh, the Catholic youth was rather immune against that, much more than other associations. And those who were prosecuted were the socialist uh, youth and the communist youth. During the time of National Socialism in Germany, these associations and organizations were prosecuted and people were sent to forced labor. And the same goes for young people who were just interested in the so-called American music, swing music, uh, mainly in Hamburg that was the case, and they were also prosecuted when they were just informal gangs in the street, just to sing together, and they were also prosecuted and deported to forced labor camps. During the time of National Socialism, everything was under control and organized by the um, Nazi party, NSDAP, and the young people were actually forced to be member either in the male wing of the uh, Nazi party or in the female wing of the youth of the Nazi party. And there was a clear program and they had also been involved into the war propaganda. The motto of the male youth was, just to give you a, a term, which Germans might know from history lessons. Be strong like Krupp steel. Krupp was the, 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 the big producer of uh, industry, of war industry. Be tough like leather and, f and fast like, uh, like the um, racing dogs. So everything actually was under the propaganda of war. And singing, of course, was also done for nationalist propaganda. And therefore, when they had international meetings, I don't know uh, what kind of meetings you had during this week or when you are working with young people and you meet each other and you want to sing something spontaneously and you have an exchange from different countries, German young people generally have a problem in presenting German songs because many of the German folk songs had been, let's say, conquered by National Socialists. And it's actually not so easy to sing a German folk song mm, without thinking uh, what is being sung and why this is sung and whether there might be anything behind. So this is part of German history. So after the Second World War, the western parts of Germany were 
occupied by the US, UK and France and administered by these uh, allied powers. And these three countries were mainly trying to to start a kind of re-education. That's what the Americans called it. And of course, the eastern part was uh, administered by the Soviet Union. So the Americans were interested in, in, in democratizing young Germans. So the former fascists or people who at least had been educated in the spirit of fascism were about to be educated or re-educated in the spirit of the US democracy. And there were some youth activity homes. One is shown here. And you find a lot of these uh, German youth activity centers, especially in West Berlin, which were installed by the Americans in order to give young people to democratic education, openness. That's why the term openness comes in, open youth work, self-determination and uh, denominational neutrality. And the same was the case in the British zone and in the French zone. Sometimes they called it anti-fascist youth work as well. As we know, there had also been a zone con under the control of the Soviet Union, and there the Free German Youth was founded as the youth wing of the Communist Party of Germany. It was founded in 1964, uh, 1946, sorry, 46, and that was a controlled monopolistic association controlled by the government of the GDR, and there was a subwing for the people, or for the young pioneers between 6 to 14 year, years. The Free German Youth, Freie Deutsche Jugend, was of great importance for the GDR because they were a strong engine for controlling education and ed and all under the state monopoly of the GDR. And this cannot be compared with the structures in the what was then West Germany. So it was also taken seriously and very importantly to work with young people. And it was a full coverage of centers for young people, youth clubs, partly very big houses in Berlin, for example. There is a uh, big center for young, uh, very young uh, children. It is still in, now under private ownership or under state ownership. But in all those cases, uh, in all the youth clubs and youth houses, uh, FDJ or the FDJ, the Free German Youth, was controlling everything, and it was very much uh, shaped by cultural work. Apart from agitation, there were also dancing uh, events, concerts, and of course a lot of um, interest um, work groups. It was um, very important also to know that when you wanted to play music in public, you needed a license, and that meant, of course, that not any kind of music could be played, and not everybody was free to play music openly. So the goal, the declared goal of the government was to educate socialist personalities. And I still will be coming to the so-called open efforts for young people at the times of GDR. Now let me um, turn again to the West because we are talking in chronological order in the 60s and 70s. There were a lot of protest movements in the West, first among students. Um, it was a movement of self-administered youth centers who claimed free spaces for themselves as young people. Especially in the early 70s, there were many um, initiatives across West Germany fighting for their youth centers. They were occupying places and declared them youth centers. In Berlin, the most famous example was the Georg von Rauch House and the Britannian in Kreuzberg. It is still existing. And they had the corresponding accompaniment by the, Jugend, by the, by the youth bands 
in Tonsteine Scherben, for example, and still there are some autonomous youth centers uh, fighting for maintaining those centers. Uh, currently, uh, places like uh, Drugstore and Potze are fighting for their existence due to gentrification in Berlin. They had to leave their original places and Potze, one of the clubs, had just been given a place to, to stay in the uh, former Tempelhof airport, but they're not really happy with that. So this is what existed here, and it's still the case that these places have to fight for their existence and for being kept in the places and having sustainable uh, futures. In the GDR, of course, they did not only have the official program. One example for youth opposition is the so-called open work, and that's what it was called also, open work, which mainly found its space in the buildings and rooms of the Protestant church. The background was that the GDR state tolerated uh, the work of the um, Protestant church and was really unable to not control these spaces. There was a regulation or a rule or an agreement between the church and the government that these areas should not be kept under control. But and th those were then places where people gathered for open work, uh, got confused a little bit among my papers. So they, and in Berlin, um, the Sel Selvatus uh, church was actually or the, a place where these uh, hippies or punks or blueser uh, could find a protected space where they could live their culture, at least, and where starting from those spaces, later, after the fall of the wall, they also had the first initiatives for street work in the east of Berlin. So a lot happened, actually, also in the east. Now, very quickly, let me just... Um, continue in this transitional period in the 90s. Let me start with the West. The time there was shaped by a very high unemployment of young people. Those who left school could not be sure to find a job. It was a huge challenge. In the early 1980s, there was a movement of uh, squatters the subject of migration and cultural diversity was one of the main and central subjects, as well as uh, uh, globalization trends. This is just to point on that. At the same time, in the still, what was then still GDR, and then later the former GDR in the 90s, and um, there were more and more subcultural movements and youth culture and after the fall of the wall, squatters also came into the east. But later, both in the west and in the east, in the early 1990s, unfortunately, there had also been crashes between the new right-wing people and the asylum seekers or migrants in general. That, unfortunately, is a big problem until today. Youth work of the GDR, if I may just uh, put it bluntly and a little bit with uh, some criticism, had to adapt to the West mm, much more than the vice versa, but this could be a subject of a separate talk. But as um, was the case in many areas, the West was rather dominating the, let's say, the situation, and that was, let's say, the situation after reunification. As regards uh, cultural work among youth in the former GDR and in United Germany, since the 1980s, youth work and cultural youth work became more and more important. There were much more music styles, uh, youth scenes, and they needed spaces, spaces to train, spaces to practice, spaces to just be. And so this area grew enormously. I myself in the 80s and 90s were, was working in this field and 
until the early 90s, I observed an expansion in the field of youth culture, but then there was a downturn because then um, money became to became short, but in the time of expansion, there was a huge amount of uh, offers for cultural work, open offers like this one, offers of international meetings, like happens in this room too, street work, rock mobiles, hip hop mobiles, a huge number of projects which were causing um, links uh, in Berlin and were definitely enriching cultural life. But as I said, there came a downturn later after that. Now let me just uh, take a bit of water because now I'm starting the second part. What is youth? What actually is the situation of young people and how do we look at young people today in Germany? And as regards our guests from other European countries, I think it's interesting to consider what is similar in your countries, what is different, and we certainly may stop after the second part and talk about it. Basically, I will be referring to the 15th report about children and youth uh, made in 2015. I'm not talking about the COVID pandemic. I will just generally speak about the situation of youth and some studies of youth research, mainly about the uh, different phases of youth. Phases of um, living have generally changed in, uh, in Germany. It is not the same in all German, European countries. In Germany, the phase of childhood has shortened. The adolescence uh, phase has, uh, is starting earlier and extends towards the uh, older age. And adults are more differentiated into different stages. And the stage of seniors uh, has extended considerably. And all that has completely changed the population pyramid. And as a consequence of that, the power of youth has almost evaporated. And that's why it's very important to look how the youth is positioned in a society. And I will like to do so by looking at the 15th report on child and youth, on children and youth. So what they say is that youth is nothing which can be described and defined as is. It is also determined um, socially and historically and is permanently changing. And that is why the age, uh, ages for the different stages may vary, not only between European countries, but also within Germany. When you look, for example, to according to Article 7, Paragraph 1 of the Social Act in Germany, then youth are those groups of the population between 14 and 18 years. When you define it by the UN General Assembly, then youth are all the people older than 15 and younger than 25. So there is a wide range depending from, from which point of view you look at young people. That's how they define them. Ah, yeah, here have it. Yes, I've got it here, this article. And here you can see how demographic change has evolved. In the past, it was so that the population pyramid in Germany used to look roughly like a Christmas tree. At the bottom, it was widest children and young people, and towards the top, it grew narrow. And you see here how it changed over time. Fewer children were born, the less young adults in the second pyramid. You can see that there's quite a large proportion of older adults. And more recent forecasts say that 
few years time there will be a very few young people more older people and especially seniors who want to have a pension and a very small number relatively small number of young people to work for that pension to fund the pensions so this is why we have to find answers to questions of who will fund pensions how shall we cope with the cost of climate change how are we going to respond to climate change and it's mainly young people who are going to suffer from it not the older ones so that's making life very difficult for politicians especially and it shows why young people have in less influence now and there were periods in the 1960s, 70s, when you could say, well, children are becoming young people. There were something like rituals of transition, both in East and West Germany. There was such an idea that when you become a young adult, you would have your own family in the near future, start working. And this has changed. It's no longer really clear when children will turn into young people, young adults. In the past, it was going to school, going to university after school, or to vocational training. But this is getting delayed now. More people start studying at universities, colleges, or start working after school and later start studying. And it's not necessarily so anymore that once you've finished school, soon after that, you'll meet your partner with whom you're going to live together for a prolonged period, having children and so on. And now it, scientists say that we have something like yo-yo careers or yo-yo lives. It's people leaving school going to work, then going back to school or university and so on. So there are lots of changes. So in sociological youth research, we say there are no longer normal biographies anymore. It's great for young people because they've got more choice now to changed their lives. What's bad is that not everyone has the same opportunities to develop during their biographies. About three quarters of the German young people can make use of these opportunities, but about one fifth to one quarter does not use these one opportunities. And a margin of my regarding the seniors, I don't know what it's like in other countries, but in Germany, also seniors kind of are under the dictatorship of remaining forever young. As Bob Dylan said, people have to remain fit, travel, keep consuming, and youth is considered to be the ideal. So youth by now stands for everything and nothing. And I once met a young adult woman. I didn't know her myself. I met her at a party. and. 
the print on a T-shirt shows what expectations young people experience now and which pressure they are. Can you read it? And I've seen people shaking their heads. I have to turn round. It's so small, I can't read it myself. Yeah. I, I really like the T-shirt. Be kind, work hard, stay humble, smile often, stay loyal. Also, uh, lächle, sei immer ehrlich, reise, wenn du die Chance kriegst. So das, this T-shirt is very, very informative. Everyone should do a um, voluntary year somewhere, work and travel and everything. So all of that basically is now hardly possible due to the pandemic, but these are not just freedoms, they are also requirements they have to fulfill. And social inequality, as I mentioned, between one-fifth and one-quarter are marginalized among the young people. They have no chance to do what that T-shirt required. They are living in poverty, facing social inequality, become homeless. So even in a rich country like Germany, there are many children, young people living in poverty. And this applies also for young people living here in this district. And there are quite a lot of them. Ground demand for performance. I really wonder if that's the same in uh, countries outside Germany. In Germany, there have been surveys asking young people what makes them suffer, suffer most, and the response was the worst was demand for performance, stress, pressure. And when I was young, Youth was an enjoyable time. Same was in research. They said youth is a time of moratorium where young people can try this and that before they f life becomes really serious. This has changed, and it changed quite a while ago. Qualification is top among all demands for performance young people are facing. So top school records, top records for getting a place in vocational training or university, having top results there and finding a good career. And the German Youth Law says the core objective for young people is to get a qualification, I wonder if you thought when you were between 50 and 20 that your main task, main objective was to get a qualification. And it's been proven in the PISA studies that also in Germany, not everyone's having the same opportunities. And it's particularly those who are disadvantaged have less access to education. So young people who are socially underprivileged, marginalized, cannot fulfill those expectations to get a qualification. So I experience that even children are under stress. It's a matter of course for children to say, I feel stressed. For me, this is shocking. This is my personal view now. However, it's not science, so to say. And there is also an 
eradication of limits of boundaries, like school doesn't finish anymore around noon. It lasts all day now, ever more, ever less time. Children can spend every last time outside schools. When I studied youth work, I opened youth work in the 1990s, young people came to youth clubs in the early afternoon. Now they come much later unless they have some leisure time activity or school, leisure time calls or so. so and at the same time, the pressure increases. There is an increasing density because people have young people have less time to finish school and uh, studies. We had the so-called diploma in the past, and now you have the bachelor's studies which are shorter, and uh, these are challenges individuals are facing nowadays. But the Children Youth Report also stated that qualification is not the only challenge for young people. Another one, very important one, is self-positioning. Young people have to find their place within society politically, culturally, and they need space for that. They would need open spaces, self-determined spaces, and also for times when they are not pursuing some purpose. And this is an issue. And for that reason, the subtitle, so to say, of the 15th Children and Youth Report from 2017 is making youth possible, facilitating youth, so to say. This means in Germany, youth is no longer possible. Being young is no longer really possible. So giving young people spaces, leaving them spaces, not everything has to serve education. You do not have to get a certificate for everything. But if you talk to young people, for instance, when they're engage in some voluntary activity, they are, for instance, committed in the youth club or doing a voluntary year or so, it's because they want to have a certificate. It's not just for trying things for experimenting. But this is exactly what young people need. And in addition to the self-determined autonomous rooms for young people, I think rooms of open cultural youth work should give the opportunity to experiment without a particular purpose. For that reason, I and I'm not the only one And it's reflected in the Children's Youth Report, claiming that young people need more free space, more time without a particular purpose. In urban and rural areas, they also need more open youth work offers. This is what is demanded on paper. We say paper is patient. In practice, we find that funding for open youth work suffers cuts, whereas other forms of youth work is getting more funding. And I do think that's a great pity. Now, however, this is a result of youth research and a very important point in the most recent youth report, uh, current studies, irrespective of the 
issues caused by the pandemic. Brief break. The question, my question, before I start my third part, my question to the partners from the countries outside Germany is whether they feel that it's roughly the same, or if in countries outside Germany, the phase of youth in a person's lives are, is still different. We do have interpreters. You just have to go to the microphone if you want to make a comment. Well, I don't want to exercise pressure on any one of you. Do you want to take the floor? Yes, please. Katana, I'm coming from Romania. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. um, I saw a very interesting for us statement here that young people and youth cultures need their own spaces. Based on your experience, uh, how do you translate this statement in public policies regarding young people? How do you translate this statement, that is an academical statement, into public policies that are addressing young people and spaces? When it's richtig verstanden habe, Thank so, yeah, uh, shall I answer in English or German? I don't know. Uh, German, but I don't know. German and then, okay. So, making sure with the interpreter. Uh, yeah, Prax, sorry. Well, I can best talk about what's going on in Berlin. One of these policies of these strategies is that open youth work first has to become aware of its significance and has to make that known to the public. In Berlin, open youth work often is in a rather weak position, but in the struggle for improving working conditions in youth work and improving conditions general for young people, if you can then point out scientific findings saying youth is more than qualification, youth needs free spaces, science has confirmed this. That's an important argument. And it's the task of open youth work and part of the, the quality profile of open youth work to make this known. Is that? The, 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 Answering a question, in Berlin, for instance, often there's a competition between offers by youth welfare, help for young people who are actually facing problems. And on the other hand, we have offers of open youth work. They are voluntary offers the municipalities, public funding does that on a voluntary basis. But in Berlin, currently, they try to take these needs more serious. So you have to do lobby work for what open youth work can do. And this is done on various levels. And it is also part of the profile of activities of tasks of the youth workers and young people themselves, those asking for the spaces, struggling for the spaces. 
Are there more questions or comments? All right, then I'll start the third part. I hope you can still concentrate. All right. Now, on the concept and profile of open youth work, particularly cultural activities, how does youth work, especially open youth work, face the currently existing challenges? I'm changing the slide. In Berlin, there is a process of quality development and practice. And one result of these activities is a kind of information paper on core activities in youth work, things done, for instance, in youth centers, then group activities promoting youth cultural scenes, like something, for instance, when Martin Kleinfeld explains to me that young people want to play in bands, they can use use rehearsal rooms here, or he helps them organizing international meetings or workshops, including music teaching or technical workshops, project work, very central for cultural education for young people. And usually project work is implemented by means or with collaboration of partners. There's a certain hype currently in Germany related to cultural education. It's being supported a lot when education of facilities are willing to collaborate with artists. For instance, if a youth club collaborates with professional musicians and some other institutions, facilities, on the basis of what young people are interested in, then they are getting relatively good funding. Their funding guidelines, one of them is uh, has the headline of culture makes you strong in Berlin. There's another one called Project for Cultural Education, providing money when youth work and school collaborate and when they collaborate with artists. And this is called collaborative projects. In the field of youth work, there's also vocational guidance activities and vocational qualification activities. There are other activities like the one you're having where young activities like those organized here where young people themselves can decide what to do, how to do it, and international youth work international collaboration, international cultural collaboration, and Rotebaum's Friends is an example for international activities, international meetings. Not all the youth facilities are engaged in this in the same way. And it's good that there are different profiles and essential aspect in open youth work is that it's about open structures as little as possible should be prepared, otherwise it wouldn't be open anymore. So it's important that participation is voluntary. This makes sure that young people decide and participate. The interests of the young people should be decisive and not what professionals have planned. 
youth work, youth culture work is aiming at all young people, young adults. So it's an important quality criterion for everyone involved to see who is reached, whom they reach and whom they do not reach. Of course, you will never be able to reach everyone with one activity, but when you're a professional, you should see when you have events going on, you should, if, if they're, for instance, just young men meeting there, playing music, enjoying their time, there are no young women joining the activity or hardly any young women. You might say, all right, it's good enough that we reach the young males, but it would be much better to find out why it's not young females joining activities, why particular people go to a particular place depends also on what the place looks like. There are young people who think at the first glance looks great, like coming here and others would just take one glance at it, say horrible, I'll never enter. And you have to be aware of that. And of course, very important is that young people are encouraged to develop self-determination, social co-determination, social commitment. It sounds very nice, but it's very important also to find out if we actually allow young people to influence decisions, make decisions, that's a very central aspect for professional youth work. So promoting self-determination, self-education is central for open youth work and youth culture work. It's a central quality feature. Yes. A specialty is uh, coming in also in youth work and especially in cultural youth work, namely that a lot of people are working there on a voluntary basis in the youth scenes. The DIY, the each one teach one principles is this really being practiced? Do they get enough space? And do young people who are committed in such a way also having a, a perspective? So what is the ranking within the institution? And is it also accompanied and coached? Well, I'm almost coming to the end. Let me just summarize. What are the what is the role and what are the tasks of educational staff? On the corridor, Martin Kleinfelder told me there is one thing which prevails, which is empathy, and the, behind this, a long there is a long big gap, and nothing uh, is more important than that. And I fully agree with that. And this is also true for formal education for university teachers, where. It is very difficult to transmit empathy via the Zoom conference uh, settings, etc. But I would also like to say something what is important for open work. Let me call it, and also based on the, so who actually developed this term? I would have to look it up. I think it was half an egger. Now let me, oh, Peter Close was the, founder of this uh, term. He called it the educational principle of restraint and um, hum humility. So I'm an employee at Roter Baum and I have a lot of r responsibility, but first, facing the young people, I should really be modest. The, it's the young people who have a say here rather than myself. I'm just assisting on 
or sharing the situation. This sounds trivial or simple, but in a research study on the subject of what are actually youth workers uh, do in open youth work, Peter Close found out that it's the central claim to be humble and modest. This is not so easy to leave the space to young people while still being an employee. That does not mean doing nothing or just uh, don't care about things. What does it mean when to assist? What happens if I notice that there are power uh, structures where I have to intervene? What if there are discrimination? Uh, there is discrimination. What is my role? What's the role of the young people? So this is a very demanding requirement to be modest and still take responsibility. And that's why developing concepts, that's where it starts. So when we say again and again, we have to reflect on it and repeat why we are doing certain things. And at some point in time, we have to put it on paper and to make it binding. And after a while, we have to check whether reality has changed, whether our concept has changed, how um, are we dealing with humbleness? When is the point where we have to intervene? So this is where we constantly have to educate ourselves. So we are creating the organizational framework, for instance, of an institution like this one. But how do we organize that uh, the youth uh, determine what happens inside and also take care of the organization? So this is another challenge and it's also part of the job of the staff working in such institutions. Participation and cooperation, those are, um, I would say, almost inflationary um, terms in German educational debate. You have to take this seriously, though, but who work in practice, they know how cumbersome it may be to work in those different levels, but being inspired and realizing this is also part of the job of the educational staff. Yeah. Now, I mentioned already the role of uh, conflict solving. This is not easy because there are some groups and scenes which are diverging, which get in conflict with each other, but there are also conflicts which are not outspoken, where we have to be sensitive as well. This is a highly demanding work in individual contact as well as in group situations, as well as in the entire structure. You always have to be sensitive to power and hierarchy structures and also be sensitive to cases of discrimination. Yes, educational assistance, that's what I explained in earlier on, uh, being modest and humble. That's another point. Developing projects. I would like to call it, uh, or let me put it as an example. A youth musical will be composed by a group and different arts uh, would appear. Hip hop bands may play, movies will be shown, uh, digital arts is to be included. Uh, there should be a story and a subject. And there are many examples of such projects. They last one or two years. But who is actually pulling the strings? Who determines the subject? Who is asking uh, for partners who would be in taking part? How, those, how can I achieve that this, it's the young people who determine this? Uh, shall I uh, develop a musical work group, or what happens if people leave school or change the place where they live. That happens um, in youth work. So there are, of course, uh, other projects, such as uh, meeting uh, journeys and travels. They, of course, require a lot of conditions. And if you are working there, you do not just have to fulfill the tasks I mentioned, but you also have to be able to network, to um, to create um, fundraising sources. You have to be politically working, you have to find cooperation partners, you have to maintain international contacts. Each of you 
who has ever done so, done this, knows what I'm talking about. So when you take a look at the full range, one thing is absolutely clear. Uh, this is not a job for a single person. You really need a team. You need to share the work and inside the team. And of course, you also have to make sure whether young adults could not be on board and lend you a helping hand. So the role of the staff is very demanding and very important. And again and again, it should be explained what's in that role. So this is a photograph about participation, involvement, taking it seriously to have this involvement. Of course, even voluntary workers are happy with a good breakfast. So this is where life starts, not just with words. You have to take care of um, action, forms of action of young people. It's not always um, something elderly staff is familiar with, uh, especially what happens in the network and social networks uh, should also be included. Challenges are, for instance, how to ensure continuity and cooperation and involvement of young people, not only in open settings, how to handle conflicts among young people, how to handle power structures and, uh, and uh, separation mechanisms, how to handle discrimination and racism, and generally, diversity, not just as a challenge, but also as an opportunity. This could be the perspective. And I think I should come to the end right now. I'm not going to explain all these details to you now. So there is one central subject which I would like to underpin. In open youth work, it's also about opening access to young people for example, uh, people who have a, a refugee hin history or background, it, we could see in 2016 and the years after, when we had a lot of refugees in Germany, we could see that the places of open youth work were really important for minors and unaccompanied uh, minor refugees, and that activities of uh, youth, for instance, in the field of hip hop, opened up uh, access to many projects. And these open places, at least for the period of that youth, uh, opened up the possibility to get in contact with other young people who have been living there for more time. And finally, I want to plea for open spaces. You see the Tempelhof airfield in Germany. It was an airport in the past, and there were plans to build houses on it, but now it's a free space, and I wish to have much more of such free spaces, not only in Germany, but also in the world as such, uh, where you have the room for creative experiments uh, which can be used by young people. Well, that's it, and thank you for your attention. Oh! Sorry. Sorry. I do have to torture you once more. I forgot about uh, speaking about COVID, but I think actually people know what COVID means. But at least I wanted to show you one last slide. Let me just take it away. It is important to know what it is about in youth work. And then we have to compare it with the possibilities and difficulties caused by the pandemic. And then we know what it means, especially to open youth work. And I wanted to show you five theses at the end of my talk, uh, which were worked out by the uh, work group for open youth work last year. And, and they say young people are also citizens, not just uh, t uh, school children. It is about not only to ensure that young people can go to school, it also has to be ensured that, the, that they can use their free spaces. In Germany, that had hardly been a subject for many years. Second thesis, youth homes should ke be kept open as free spaces. For a long time, they were closed. I don't know the situation at Roderbaum, but I know a lot 
uh, of places where youth were only uh, allowed individually or rather than in groups. And certainly you will talk about this. In, in, but of course, this has something to do with the rules and regulations in the various countries inside and outside Europe. But as far as I know, in many youth houses and youth centers, that was a problem indeed. Then there was still uh, the question of digitization through the back door in uh, youth centers. You shouldn't understand this as a claim which ignores that digital media and social networks are of central importance. But with that thesis, we want to point out that still the rooms of meeting analogly cannot be and should not be replaced by digital rooms. There are different qualities between the two things. And now this is demographic rooms of uh, should be um, retained. In my uh, college, for example, it's hardly possible to have face-to-face -face, uh, seminars again. And I think it's important to have this uh, meeting between students and adults. And this should definitely happen in analogous rooms. You can't do everything just via social networks because you lose each other out of sight. For instance, uh, if you are part of a youth club or a university or college. So it's also about politics. It's about lack of possibilities of solidarity. And then the fifth thesis, and this will be the end, uh, the social contribution of uh, child work and youth work should be marked rather than overlooked. In Germany, for a long time, the discussion was only about opening hours of uh, childcare facilities, and but whether a child goes to the youth club or not is not so important for maintaining the economy, but the social contribution of um, open um, social work is very important. I wanted to end with this thesis, uh, but it was necessary from my point of view. Sorry for adding it at the very end. So now it's time for your questions, if any. Then I would like to go to the other microphone. And I will go back to the thesis. The question was, uh, what was the situation in Germany when uh, clubs and uh, youth centers were closed? So we all were looking to the uh, speech of our chancellor, and next day I wrote to my teams, uh, we can continue sleeping, but tomorrow we will see the results. And from the first lockdown day, we really were uh, up and running with our digital system, uh, which takes us to thesis number three immediately. Up until the midst of June, we were closed. That means that the staff was here, they um, prepared the digital offers, they also made sure that those kids who were not even uh, in a position to, do, to have a digital training and schooling, because we had no printers, no scanners, no... So we at least gave them the possibility to use the copy machine, but uh, meetings where many different people met at the same time were not here. So after that, there came no complete lockdown for us, because Berlin also sent a somewhat different name in small groups, and when there was then the regulation that no more than five people could be in a room, but we were in the happy, the lucky situation that we have a big house with a lot of rooms, and in spite of that, uh, we could provide room for many young people and uh, give, give them the opportunity to meet. So I would also like to come back to point number three, digitization. I think this is exactly the uh, very exciting point because I think we really went along with a lot of fantasy. The people in this institution, they really wrecked their brains. They opened up a meeting room. They opened a video channel, and actually we had much more time uh, for the young people be because we had to open uh, 
in the morning and late evening, and they spent a lot of uh, time in the video room. Well, some things were also nonsense. Uh, after the 22nd uh, cooking uh, show, uh, one could know that it's not so exciting anymore. But we were creative, and it helped us to keep people on board so that they kept coming in and returning. Therefore, digitization was really good, but of course, it can by no means replace the uh, analog uh, social context. Okay, so I would like to thank you, unless there is any question from the audience. So we will still have a little short uh, coffee break. Uh, it's, I think we should continue uh, at a quarter to four. Okay, let me start. So, we are now approaching the end, and this will be the presentation of a work which we finished just yesterday. Those are the, this is our wish list for making youth work happen. We really worked a long time on it, much longer than planned yesterday, simply in order to produce a piece of paper which is of general validity. And this is really difficult because we are all coming from different backgrounds and realities. But on the other hand, uh, the mm, demand should be concretely enough so that decision makers would have a chance to understand it and to put it into practice. And Vicenzo is the one who is going to present it to us. And mm, not even I have seen it fully so far. Okay, Vicenzo. Let's draw some lines. I'm not very used to speak in public. I also try to avoid the phone calls when I am in the office, but here I am, just right after uh, more experienced people with, um, than me, a uh, professional trainer, a professor from university, uh, so no pressure at all. And, uh, okay, uh, I want to say sorry to the translation team for my poor English, just sorry, uh, because they will have to translate what I'm going to tell. So, uh, I want to start uh, actually thanking all our partners in our project, Rotterdam Berlin, that is hosting us for all the things that they have done for us in uh, these days, but also Curva de Cultura from Romania, uh, Riz Zvoret Rakichen from uh, Slovenia, Naranjasti from Serbia, and of course, I have to say, uh, vi voglio bene to my colleagues in the office that are watching and probably laughing. And uh, okay, um, you already know all the process that have brought us to this point. You know how the project has been during these crazy two days, uh, two, days two years, and uh, everything was supposed to be different, but then the pandemic struck us, and uh, we had to do things in a different way. Uh, okay, I should introduce myself for the ones that don't know me. I am Vincenzo, I come from Sicily, and I'm a youth worker inside the Strauss APS. Uh, that is my organization, and uh, I choose to start with this slide, uh, not just because it express uh, the... Mm, the youth work, how the open youth work should be, how the open youth workers should be, but it also express all the work that we have done through this project because it's been energetic, it's been flexible, it's been funny, it's been open-minded. Our work has all the characteristics that, to, that you can see inside this wonderful drawing from Nina. Uh, in this part, we will talk about a handout that we prepared for policy and decision makers. 
This handout is uh, a product that were um, meant to be the shorter and the more effective possible. And I'm going to show it. You can also see it in the postcards that we have here at the entrance. We have fixed these six points that you can see because this is how open youth work is and always should be. It has to be universal, first of all, because accessibility to open youth centers is a must that has to be taken in consideration for all the young people. All the activities, all the structures that are related to open youth work and open youth centers must be accessible, first of all. And because of this, we also identified the roles of, in the profile of the youth worker that Cosmin showed us previously this morning. Um, then, uh, for sure, open youth work is free. People should not be charged for anything. And this is a very important point because sometimes uh, open youth work and youth work are not uh, considered uh, valuable as they are. And I know that here in Germany the situation is uh, pretty good. Uh, it's also a cultural factor. Uh, in our uh, organization, in uh, Strauss, sometimes we wonder uh, how would have been when we were young uh, to have a place like the one they, that we are running. Uh, I really believe that probably we will not be there uh, putting our efforts in creating something that is valuable for our youth in uh, Musomeli which is a very small town, but still we um, put as much energy as we can to give them, uh, to give youth the, um, the opportunities that we didn't have. Uh, and we do this just, uh, they can come to us without paying anything, so as in other youth centers that are existing uh, all around Europe. Uh, open youth work also has to be educational. Why? Because um, considering that our, um, our compass is always leading to the uh, non-formal education, we really believe in how these techniques can help youth to gain competences uh, that can be valuable for the rest of their lives, but competences in uh, non-formal education are passed by uh, peers. There is not a structure. Uh, it's not a vertical uh, passage of competences. It's from one to the other. And not only youth is gaining competences when they are attending activities. Also, the youth workers can learn a lot from youth. Open youth work has to be welcoming because otherwise it wouldn't be open, it will not involve youth. If we don't welcome youngsters to come, they will not be there. And this is something that uh, has to be taken in consideration also from decision and policy makers. We are a valuable resource for youth. Open youth work is also safe. We provide a safe environment, and I'm not talking just about the building. I'm talking about all the um, structure also in terms of emotions, in terms of, um, I'm just missing the word in English, sorry. Uh, in terms of uh, values that we uh, want to pass to young people uh, and the safety of open youth centers are granted by the professionalism of people working there, professionalism of uh, youth workers. Uh, 
And uh, another important uh, feature of open youth work, for sure, is um, how young people can confront themselves about everything. And there is no, um, there is um, no split between people having more opportunities and people having fewer opportunities. Uh, there is no distinction that is that can be based about um, on the income of a, a family of a youngster. There is uh, no division about gender, gender identity, and, uh, about um, the places from which they are coming, uh, and this helps youth to. Um, have this so social learning process because uh, in uh, as I said in informal education the, the passage of competences is uh, not vertical everyone can learn from all, uh, all the others and this is um, probably uh, the, this uh, social learning aspect is the very first glimpse that young people can have about the differences from their peers that they might have. And this is the point where they can start uh, knowing diversity. And knowing diversity and having to deal with uh, people that have different interests, uh, different beliefs, but um, common values as the self-development as um, the willing, the eagerness to grow. Um, this is uh, where the very social part um, arrives. And, sorry. In uh, this handout, we wanted just the, the brainstorming process was uh, pretty intense and uh, it lasts uh, pretty long, uh, but we wanted to be very effective in the things that we are uh, um, that we are stating, because we really believe in open youth work, and so should uh, um, policy and decision makers, because. You cannot uh, deprivate someone from an opportunity that should be a right. And being a right is something that must be granted for every youngster that we might encounter during this process. During these um, last days, uh, with the implementation of the seminar about open youth work, we got joined from partners from TAC in uh, Spain, from La Ligue in uh, France, in Marseille, and from uh, Zdravodaste in uh, Bosnia. Uh, I hope that the pronunciation was the proper one for everyone. And uh, we um, wanted, you know, being working on something for uh, more than two years, uh, could also get your perspective uh, less wide open. So we wanted this perspective to be enlarged again. So I want to thank, uh, I want to thank the partners that joined us in uh, these days for the contribution that they gave to our work and also for the effort that they made in uh, um, uh, having another perspective that was not the one that we were serving them. Because the, uh, a bias in this case would have been the worst issue to, to face, but uh, luckily the contribution from our new partners, uh, it's been uh, always uh, fair, always productive, so thank you a lot for your contribution, and uh, this contribution, uh, these uh, add-ons that we had on our work are leading us 
to do a statement, a declaration, something that we don't want uh, to be um, like something that is coming out of the blue. We really want it to be a turning point for what open youth work is uh, right now and for what we want the open youth work to go in the future, but not just in our countries, in the countries of uh, the partners uh, inside the, both this project, but I guess that all European countries and all those countries that are involved in the European programs for youth uh, should uh, take advantage of uh, this work, not just because it's done by us, but because I really think that is a valuable one and that this could represent a good, uh, uh, a good start to make open youth work grow in the following years. Uh, the contributions are, have been categorized. Die Beiträge wurden eingeteilt in fünf Bereiche und für jeden Bereich haben wir eine kurze Erklärung, in der wir zeigen, wohin sich offene Jugendarbeit künftig entwickeln soll. Wir beginnen mit den Jugendzentren. Offene Jugendzentren sind ein grundlegendes Bedürfnis aller Gemeinschaften. Sie brauchen, es müssen autonome, zuverlässige Anlaufpunkte für Jugendliche sein. Offene Jugendzentren sind eine sichere, zugängliche, freie Umgebung, in der Jugendliche... of an open youth center must be sustainable and multifunctional to provide as many activities as young people need. Local youth is the real owner of the space. It's theirs to run activities aimed at an individual group and generational growth. Because of this, a youth center must be regulated with a contract to be as long as possible according to national regulation to grant continuity, reliability, sustainability, and fairness to the opportunity, in the opportunities provided. I want to uh, start from this last point. We have talked about uh, how long the contract for uh, open youth centers and youth centers should be. They should be as long as possible, as long as the law can grant it, and uh, a contract should be something not just written but set in stone. It shouldn't be possible to break a contract just because there is a shift in the political view or there is a shift on the, politi on the political side. Because we are talking about the well-being of our communities. It's not something that is abstract. It's something that is really and very concrete. We want fairness in the opportunities because we don't want for a group of youngsters to have the chance to attend a youth center and then just five years later, youngsters that are at the same age as the previous group could not have those opportunities. This is unfair to a whole generation. It's not just a matter of work. It's a matter of how, on how we believe that our community should be built. <coughs> Sorry. We have talked a lot about the space. For us, for instance, we don't have such a bigger space as uh, Anna here in which we are hosting today, but <clears throat> spaces as we have uh, put inside, inside the booklet that we produced can be multifunctional. A room can be adapted to the need that young people might have in that particular moment, in that particular period. And 
we have to uh, consider how the community can benefit uh, on the youth center. Um, you know, in Sicily, youth centers are not that developed, but for a simple reason. When you have kids and you are working, then the family will be your support. Why asking to the support of the family when there could be an alternative for kids and youngsters to have a, a development that is, first of all, social, because they are not the only kids or youngsters in there. And then, um, more than social, it can be a development on many sides. It can be a development on uh, social skills, it can be an, a development on soft skills, on abilities, on passions, on hobbies. They could really have a huge opportunity to find their own path, to find their own way for their future. Together with youth centers, it comes the youth work, because for sure youth centers cannot be left just like there. You cannot give a, each people a key and then they enter, and they go inside, and then what happens? Youth work and open youth work have uh, <clears throat> different quality standards to be respected, each with own measures and indicators. Recognition of youth work is an achievement for all um, European EU states and partners country and partner countries involved in European programs for youth. Youth workers and or the NGOs running youth centers have representatives working together in a council addressing the needs and the trends of youth work all around Europe. Youth work in Italy is not recognized. And not being recognized, it also means that it's not easy to explain what youth work is. And I experience this uh, difficulty even just with my family. How can I explain them why I'm here? I am here because of a project. I'm here because of a project involving youth. I'm here because of a project involving youth because I am a youth worker. Having a recognition that is done in all the countries that are involved in the European programs is the very fundamental basis to have an open youth work and a youth work that are effective in all the countries involved. Otherwise, we will always have this main issue on explaining our work. Our work shouldn't be explained. It should be done. That's it. I'm going then to youth workers, our side of the field. Youth workers operating in an open youth, youth center must be professional, experienced, and hired based on working contract. The professional stability of youth workers is positively reflecting on their approach with both uh, the youth and the job itself. Competences such as basics of psychology and sociology, non-formal education methodologies and techniques, coaching methods are needed and because of this, because they are needed, they are, they are also quantifiable in terms of salary and working hours. To achieve this, all EU countries must recognize youth work as a profession and not as a craft. A youth center has a proper number of staff members, have a proper number of staff members in accordance to the amount of young people living in the neighborhood, in the area, in the town. If a youth worker doesn't see his or her work as valuable, for sure will not put all the efforts possible to make the young people uh, be happy to attend the youth center. One thing is when it's something run by passion. One thing is when it's just a job. When you have passion, Okay, working hours and money are not a big deal. You can work for 12 hours uh, because you have a deadline and you have to 
or write the project to apply for it, and uh, you don't even matter about that. But on the job side, if youth work is also a job and not only uh, something based on a passion, with the responsibility of being a youth worker must come a, a proper salary, a proper um, amount of hours worked, and most of all, a proper contract. One thing is doing a, a job, another thing is doing volunteering, and we are going to get there. It's not imaginable that someone could tell uh, uh, to a youth worker, yes, you can uh, work here at the moment, you will not be paid, but maybe in the future, who knows, then it can come like a very short contract, then someone else will be outside the door probably willing to enter. And uh, okay, you, you know what? I just don't need you anymore. But for sure, I will write you a nice reference letter and you will try this thing the whole uh, time again from the beginning. This is something that uh, it's not just possible. The youth workers need to be stable as uh, workers. You cannot imagine, and I am talking also to municipalities running uh, youth centers, you cannot imagine that a program can be done just for three uh, months, then another three months, then another three months. We have spoken about how long a contract for a youth center should be, and it should be as long as it can be possible, then hiring contracts, work contracts, has to follow the, that lead. One thing is work, one thing is volunteering. Of course, there is space for volunteering in an uh, open youth center and in a youth center. Volunteering is a proper mean of engagement, so it is regulated and recognized. Partnerships with educational institutions allow youngsters to have their volunteering recognized as a learning process through their involvement in youth center. The cooperation between educational institutions with youth center is part of a quality standard for schools and universities in order to increase the availability of learning opportunities for youngsters. Why a volunteer should not have something in return. If you are willing to uh, be a, a resource for a youth center, I mean, it's your will and it's um, the basics of volunteering, but at the same time, it's um, fair to have uh, some kind of a reward that can be related to studies or to the employability of volunteers. For this reason, the volunteering period of uh, a youngster that wants to be involved in the youth center has to be regulated and recognized. The kids that are attending the activities of a youth center can be the volunteers of tomorrow because they liked the place, they liked the structure, they liked the activities, and I want to be sure that the ones that will follow my path will have the same opportunities that I had. And that's why schools and uh, university and educational institutions should have partnerships with youth center as um, highest score in their performance. As an NGO, we are um, every day uh, facing the things connected with uh, quality labels to accreditations. We have always to be uh, real, uh, reliable and we have always to be there explaining what we are doing, why we are doing it, uh, why school and universities shouldn't. They should, actually. They should build partnerships together with youth center in order to have the youth center to be officially in the life of young people. We are lucky on this side. 
because we have partnerships in Strauss with all the schools that are in Mossomeli. We have a range of schools going from primary to high school, and we are cooperating with all of them. But it's just because of the efforts that my colleagues have put in it. It's just because there are directors and teachers that really think that we are a resource for our town. But it's not always like that. Having a um, partnership with a school or with a university is a proper way to have the youth centers known by young people. And once that the youth center is known, for sure there will be more people attend attending to it and taking the opportunity to be part of it. But to run a youth center, it's not uh, easy because for sure you need resources. When it comes to resources, youth center, we really hope have access to resources through different programs instituted and regulated by local, regional, national, and or international institutions. Part of the financial resources are available directly to young people in order to develop initiative, responsibility, and accountability. Resources are not just meant to be financial, but also in terms of materials, equipment, support, and access to decision makers. It's not just about money. Of course, money helps to run a youth center, but what is money when, when you have to paint a wall, you have to ask for a permission that can be mm, given in something like four, five, six months. Uh, that's why also just the access to decision makers is a resource. Okay, probably the municipality is out of money as well. It can happen. It, um, in Italy, it happens a lot of times. But it's not just, okay, you are not giving me money, <laughs> but you have a wall building that is not used. Okay, let's make, an, uh, let's make another youth center out of it. And just let's try not to do it in reverse. Let's not, let's not try to make youth centers that are existing to be something else. Just suggestion. And um, if it's not uh, a building, maybe the municipality has a set of chairs that can be used inside the youth center. Why those chairs should be left over there taking dust and not given to youngsters to have their activities in a place that is more welcoming for them. And when it comes about money, sure, young people should have a part of the budget to develop their own activities. Because in that way, they will learn also how to be accountable, how to be responsible. If I give young people a budget to spend on the uh, activities that they want to run, for sure they will take that money being scared of what they are doing with it. And that like fear will bring them to be sure that the money is not going to be wasted. And money, when it comes to uh, politics, sometimes we surely know that it's going to be wasted. Why we shouldn't take young people for what they are. They are citizens. They are the future constituency of those decision makers that don't see them as that. One day, those young people will have the right to vote. That's why, in, uh, as a decision maker, for sure, I will take, uh, if I would have ever been a decision maker, I will not for sure, but just if I would have been a decision maker, youngsters will be the first uh, thing to take care about 
because together we, with, young, with youngsters, you also have the support of parents that know that you are taking in account the uh, thing that they cherish the most in the world. You are taking care of their children, of their nephews, nieces, grandchildren, their neighbors. You are taking in account the most vulnerable people that you will find there because they are still young. They have not the experience of what life will serve them in the future. They have needs as young people. And those needs are meant to be listened, not just ignored or considered as a white noise in the background because they're children, they're not voting. No, it's not like that. Children one day will become a proper citizen with the right of vote and they should be able to know who is taking care of them in their childhood and who is not. That's why a decision maker should really think about young people as a citizen, as one large part of their future constituency. Okay, uh, I don't know if you will, if you want to share your thoughts, doubts, if you have questions, I am open to answer or otherwise I am open to ask someone to jump in and answer. <laughs> okay, I'm feeling like at, a, at an auction. Uh, okay, yes, I could drink. As I mentioned before, when the FANA version was produced, I wasn't with the group because I was making sure that the room was prepared for today. So I have a question. What's the reason why you stress EU country so much? Because for me, youth work should be like that in every country, not only in the EU countries. Oh, it, it's an EU. Yes, I can do it in English. Um, for me, um, the, the, the biggest question is why you put in the statement only the EU countries. In one moment, it was also uh, EU countries plus partner countries. But in the second one, it was just EU countries. And for me, this is a question that should be to all the countries, not only to EU countries. because. I see the different, I, I mean, I'm happy to be part of EU, but those who are not should be not excluded because they are not invited to it. No, for sure, um, okay, the, the issue was that the five uh, categories and then sentences have been done separately considering the contribution that we had from the seminar. It was not something intentional to exclude other countries for sure. In the final version of it, we will include all the countries that are involved in European programs. That, uh, I mean, it will be great to have other countries also that are not involved in uh, European programs for youth, but for sure in the final version, we can uh, fix this. Okay, uh, I'm not that good at singing. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that we can uh, move on and I will ask Martin to, yes, because I am not aware on what is going to be next. I only know that this was my part and that finally it's over uh, because I uh, was supposed to talk about something that we wanted to be short on purpose. So yeah, uh, again, thank you a lot. And uh, it's been a pleasure to be here even if I had to have a talk. <laughs> thank you.
Es wünsche ich so, and while you spoke, the sun was sign, the sun was starting. So, ja, uh, ja, die ursprüngliche Idee war ja diese. Well, the original idea was to approve the statement. Now, there are very, very few people here who have not been involved in drafting it. So I'd say. We need not officially approve it. it. We can just consider it to be the statement and publicize it, make it available for everyone and all people who try to promote youth work and facilitate youth work. Because I think what that it will be a two-page paper describing the benefits as introduced before and the requirements for achieving these benefits on the other page. And I think this is the best summary we could produce. And it's good to have such a brief summary because decision makers will never read the full version. Those who are really committed don't need the full version, and the others will not be interested in reading all the details. And uh, one or two pages summary will be the best for all of them. And this is why I think we should approve of that. And I think this is now the best moment to start the concluding remarks. I thank everyone who was involved. It was a long time through several stages, and we haven't reached the end yet. We do hope that we can keep working on what we've set up up to now. Youthcenters.eu is quite a prestigious web address, so I'm sure we will apply for further international projects, get approval for them, and implement them. So I thank everyone who's been here, who's been with us all this time during those past really tough and demanding 18 months, who've been working hard to catch up since May, with all we couldn't do due to the problem starting in the middle in mid last year. And thank you for everyone. And I want to thank the two companies who made everything possible, the interpreter servers and the technical services. A month ago, we found that we could have this event. It was difficult because the Alitza Solomon College wasn't accessible. Others couldn't host us. Originally today, young people were to be here to use this facility. So we also have to thank the young people who left those rooms to us. I thank the companies who responded on such short, short notice so that uh, we could have our event and people could follow us around the world. So you can feel invited to stay here, have drinks together. Sun's come out, as I mentioned. So it's more enjoyable outside now to continue our meetings, discussions. Have a nice day.